For those of you who worked with me, you know for a fact that I never wear a shirt, ever. As a matter of fact, in the last five years, the only time I wore a shirt was my wedding, because I was forced to. And that basically is an indication of how important this conversation is. I, I would not be exaggerating if I said that this year, specifically 2024, maybe 2025, is the most pivotal year in history of humanity. So please quote me on this. It is the most pivotal year of the history, in the history of humanity. There has never been more disruption, and the biggest challenge with that disruption is that the most strategic, important people in the world, yourselves, uh, are not fully informed of what's happening in AI. So it's gonna be my task today to tell you what actually is happening. It's mind-blowing. It's moving as fast as anything I've ever seen in my life, and it's gonna affect every citizen in every country. The first thing I would like to, do, to say is, what is AI? Surprisingly, most of us know the term, but we don't actually understand exactly what's going on. Uh, so let me give you two examples. I started coding when I was eight, uh, and I love my machines. I really, really speak to them like I speak to a human. I'm a very serious geek, very, very serious. For the first 25, 30 years of my life, when we coded computers, think of it this way. If I gave every one of you a puzzle of 10 pieces, and then I told you, now take this piece, put it in that corner, take that piece, put it in this corner, then fill it with those two pieces, you would not count as intelligent. You would count as a very glorified mechanical Turk. You do exactly as you're told. That's how we used to, develop, to, to code computers until the turn of the century. We would solve the problem first using human intelligence, and then we would tell the computers to do it repeatedly very fast. By the turn of the century, AI, by the way, was, is nothing new. Huh? AI, since 1956, we were dreaming of it. Even on my Sinclair computer, which is like a tiny toy, at age eight, I attempted to create AI. This was our geek dream forever. Only by the turn of the century was there enough compute power and enough data in the world because of the internet that AI started to pop up in something that we call deep learning. And deep learning was simply the idea, again, imagine as a human example, uh, your children. So our children, when they're young, we give them those puzzles, a piece of wood with some holes in it and a cylinder and a star-shaped thing that they try to insert in those toys. Nobody actually walks to the child and say, hey, baby, turn the cylinder on its side, look at the cross-section, it's a circle, compare it to the other cross-sections, and then pass it through, it will pass. Nobody does that. That's traditional programming. Real human intelligence is to give the child a toy, and they keep trying until they figure it out. That's what we did with deep learning. With deep learning, now that we had billions of data records on the internet, we could tell a computer, look at all of the numeric images on the internet and figure out what is the number seven. And it would do it. The very first example of that that really shook the tech world was 2009 in Google. Uh, I, was, uh, I was still vice president of emerging markets at the time. We uh, issued a white paper, paper that was called the CAT paper. And the CAT paper was simply that we had enough spare capacity to tell our computers to go and watch YouTube. That's all we did. We didn't tell them what to look for. We didn't tell them what things look like. Uh, a few uh, uh, you know, weeks later, one of them came back and said, I found something. We asked it what it was, and it showed us a cat. Of course, it's YouTube. But it didn't find one cat. It find what the catness is, you know, that fluffy, annoying, entitled little creature. In every angle, doing whatever it is, the computers could find every cat, every human, every car, every red Ferrari, every everything. We did not teach them a thing. We just told them to observe patterns. 2016, another breakthrough was what we used to call, uh, we still call it reinforcement learning, but it evolved a lot. So just giving you the milestones at a very top level. Until 2016, when we wrote a piece of code and the code couldn't find what we were looking for, we deleted it. In 2016, we decided, no, 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 treat it like a child. Tell it, no, baby, this is not a duck, it's a cat. Can you, find, can you change your own thinking so that you discover that it's a cat? Reinforcement learning completely revamped our idea of AI, and it's the reason why you have things like ChatGPT today. Those machines are not told to do anything by humans. The new form of programming gives the computer enough information for the, for the computer to find its own intelligence. 